Welcome to Lesson 9. We're still working our way through Chapter 2 of the Beyond the Basic Stuff with Python book, and now we're going to learn about environment variables, and specifically the path environment variables. This is a very important part of environment setup. Now, all running processes of a program, no matter what language the program is written in, have a set of variables called environment variables. And now environment variables often hold system-wide settings that every program would find useful. For example, the temp environment variable holds the file path where any program can store temporary files. On Windows, I can use the echo command to display the temp environment variable's contents. I just have to surround the environment variable's name with parentheses, with percentages, and this is the string that's stored in that environment variable. On macOS and Linux, I can also use the echo command here to display, say, the username environment variable's contents. On macOS and Linux, you don't use the percent signs, you just use a single dollar sign at the beginning. And you can see this is the string stored in this environment variable. And you can also use the env, the environment command, to display all of the environment variables for a process along with their values. If you want to see a list of the command lines environment variables on Windows, you can run the set command. And this will display all of the environment variables and their values. Now when the operating system runs a program such as this command line program, the newly created process for that program receives its own copy of the operating system's environment variables and values. And then the process can change its environment variables independently of the operating system's set of environment variables. So you can think of it as inheriting a copy of the operating system's environment variables. Now any programs that I run from this terminal or this command line window will also inherit a copy of these environment variables and their values. And I bring up environment variables here because one such environment variable, path, can help you run your programs from the command line. Now any process that creates another process, such as when the command line runs the Python interpreter, that child process receives its own copy of the parent process's environment variable. So the child process can change the values of its own environment variables independently without affecting the parent process's environment variables. Uh, the environment variables are only copied when the process creates a new process. After that, they are totally separate. So you can think of the operating system's set of environment variables as a sort of master copy from which all processes copy their environment variables uh, when they're created. And the operating system's environment variables change less frequently than, say, a Python program's environment variables. In fact, most users never directly touch any of these environment variable settings. But we're going to learn how to do that because we'll need to look at the path environment variable. Now on Windows, when you enter a command or a program to run, such as Python, the terminal is actually checking for a program with this name in the current working directory, this folder. And if it doesn't find it there, it's going to also check other folders, and these are folders that are listed in the path environment variable. In the previous lesson, we used the where and which commands to find the absolute file path of this program. And these commands use the path environment variable. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Echo percent path percent. Now, this is a very lengthy value for this, but you can see it's a list of folders separated by semicolons here on Windows. Here's one folder, and then here's another folder, followed by another folder and so on. So when I type Python into the terminal, it checks the current working directory, and if it doesn't find a python.exe program there, it's going to search for it 
in this folder. And if it doesn't find it there, it's going to search for it in this folder. And if it doesn't find it there, it'll search in this folder, and so on and so on until it searches the last folder. And if it doesn't find it there, then it displays a uh, command or a program not found error message. Sort of like if I just entered um, some made up command or program name right there. Now on Windows, you can view the current path value with just the path command that also displays that same path value. On Mac OS and Linux, you can run echo dollar sign path to view the value of the path variable. And on these operating systems, the file paths are separated by a colon instead of a semicolon. Now the order of the folder names in the path environment variable is important. If I have two files named python.exe, say in this folder, but then also in this folder, the one in the earlier path is going to be executed. And if we look here, we can see that I have a python.exe in this folder, which if I check in here is uh, right here. But then apparently I also have it here in Microsoft slash Windows apps, which is right here. But that comes after the other folder. And that's why this is the program that runs when I enter Python on my computer in the command line. Now you can change the current terminal windows path environment variable to include additional folders. Uh, the process for doing this varies slightly between Windows and the Mac OS and Linux operating systems. On Windows, you can run the path command to add a new folder to the current path value. I'll run the path command and then I'll just give it some new folder. I'll just pretend this is new folder and then have a semicolon, and then I will type percent %path%. Percent. So this is the current value of the path. So I'm adding this new folder to the path environment variable in front of all the existing folders currently in the path environment variable. So now when I run the path command to view this, you can see that it exists here at the very front of all of these other folders. You can do a similar thing on macOS and Linux. You can set the path environment variable with a similar syntax. I'm going to type path equals slash new folder colon, because colons separate the folders in the path environment variable on macOS and Linux, and then dollar sign path to represent the current folders in the path environment variable. And then I can type echo dollar sign path to display the new path var environment variable. You can see here, there's that new folder I've added. Now these methods only affect the path environment variable to this current terminal window and any programs it launches after I've made this change. But if I open a new terminal window, Say I just click here and run command prompt. There's a second one and I type path to display this. You can see this new folder, that's gone. That change only happened in this command line window. If we want to permanently add this folder to path, we have to make a change to the operating systems set of environment variables and its copy of the path environment variable. So to do that on Windows, let's click on the Start button and then type Edit Environment Variables for your account. That's going to bring up this dialog box. You can see Windows has two sets of environment variables. There's the system environment variables, which apply to all users. And then on top of that, 
there's going to be some additional environment variables called the user environment variables, and this is for my particular user account. What I want to do is select the path environment variable for my user, and then click edit. And from this dialog menu, I can create new folders or edit a selected folder or maybe delete them or change their order by moving them up and down. But once I'm done with all of those changes, I can click OK and then OK again here. Now remember, the copy of the environment variables is only made when a new process is launched. So this existing command line window won't have the changes that I just made to the operating system's environment variables. But if I start up a new command prompt, the new window that I create after making those, those changes will have inherited an up-to-date copy of those environment variables. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now the interface for editing the environment variables that comes with Windows isn't exactly the best in the world. I like to use this program called Rapid Environment Editor. And I find that its interface is a bit nicer for editing the uh, system variables or also the user environment variables. You can download and install this for free from rapidee.com. Uh, note that after installing it, you have to run this software as an administrator to edit the system variables, otherwise they'll be read only. So I can click here, Rapid Environment Editors, and then right click on this and then select Run as Administrator, and you'll have to have the administrator password or user permissions to do that but you'll always be able to edit the user environment variables. Now to permanently add folders to the path on macOS and Linux, you'll want to edit a text file named .bashrc in your home folder. So I'm just going to open up a text editor program. And it's in my home folder, so I'll type slash home slash al slash dot bash rc. There's a lot of configuration that happens here. And just maybe at the bottom I will enter export path equals have my new folder name along with the colon separator and then the existing value of path. Go ahead and save this and close it. And this terminal window won't have the updated path, but if I open up a new terminal window, I can see that new folder is in here now. Now on Mac OS, uh, Catalina and later versions, the default shell program, the terminal program, isn't bash, but it's been changed to Z shell. So you'll need to modify the .zshrc file in your home folder instead of .bashrc. And that just about wraps it up for environment setup. Now the path environment variable is really important, especially if you have multiple versions of Python installed on your computer. If you run Python 3 and then you notice that it's running some odd version of Python that you didn't expect, that's because Python 3 the Python 3 program that you ran exists in a folder that's further up on the path environment variable, so you'll have to probably modify that if you want to have Python 3 refer to the exact version that you want. Otherwise, you could always enter the absolute path, such as this, to run that program, but typing the absolute path, it's sort of lengthy usually and it's kind of a pain. So getting your path environment variable set up correctly will make it a lot easier to deal with. Now in the next lesson, we're going to leave behind all of this command line and terminal stuff and start focusing on the Python programming language itself with code formatting.